Welcome back. Dr. Mark Abel is here. We were talking about tick-borne illnesses and the brown-tailed moth. Not a, not a, a overly popular topic, but one that a lot of people are dealing with. So thank you very much for, for coming in. And so we'll start with the winters that we've been dealing with, a little bit milder. Uh, how has that impacted the ticks that are out there, and what should people know? Yeah, absolutely. So with warmer weather, climate change, just our extended kind of um, less less snow, less, less freezing temperatures, we're seeing the ticks, they're definitely surviving longer. They're around for more of the year. They're extending their season definitely beyond the just the traditional summer, fall that we used to see them in. And because of that, we're seeing a lot more ticks. We're seeing a lot more of the diseases that ticks spread. So the deer tick in particular, which is the black-legged tick, mm -hmm. is a tick that transmits Lyme disease. And we have seen a rise in cases of Lyme disease in Maine. Um, and Lyme disease, of course, is an infection that can cause a number of different symptoms. You know, most commonly rash, muscle and joint pains, uh, fevers, chills, um, and then late manifestations of it, if it's not diagnosed, can lead to arthritis, even meningitis, and heart block sometimes. So certainly a very concerning infection and not one that we want to have people having, you know, if we can prevent it. Now, aside from Lyme disease, what other effects can come from the deer tick? Other diseases they carry, what can they do to people? Yeah, so the most common ones, so anaplasmosis, which is another bacteria like Lyme disease, and then babesiosis, which is a parasite, both are also carried by the same tick. Um, they're not as common as Lyme disease, but we certainly, they're both endemic to Maine, so we definitely do see cases of both diseases. Um, they can have a number of different symptoms, and they tend to be more severe in people who are older or people with underlying medical problems. So certainly anyone who has had a tick bite and is feeling ill should go to their doctor because there are really reliable tests that can be done to diagnose these infections and there's treatment. They're all curable with treatment. Now, I think this is important. A lot of people probably have talked about this or know, but uh, as we're out and about a lot more frequently, what should people know? What should they do? Should they come back inside or be outside and find a tick on them? Yeah, so with most infectious diseases, prevention is the key if, if a disease can be prevented, and certainly these can be prevented. The most important thing is to prevent the ticks from getting on you in the first place. So that includes things like wearing, uh, wearing long sleeve clothing, um, covering up uh, outdoors, um, using an effective insect repellent, um, and then checking yourself, your family members, and your pets for ticks when you come inside after spending time outdoors. Um, and you know that means a very thorough look. If you do find a tick on you, carefully and gently removing it um, while making sure to get all of the tick. Uh, there are tools that are available like tick spoons mm -hmm. or just a pair of tweezers is usually good enough. And just making sure that the site you keep it, keep it clean, monitor the site where the tick was to make sure there's no rash that develops there. And if you do have any rash or any symptoms, you know, see your doctor. Um, if you, if, if you um, have a tick that's been there for a while, it's been on you for more than 36 hours, then you should contact your doctor because there are there is an antibiotic that can be given as a prophylactic to prevent Lyme disease if you um, take it within 48 hours of removing the tick. Lyme disease takes usually about 36 hours for the tick to transmit to humans, and so if you have the tick on you for a shorter period of time than that, um, or if you're out of that 48-hour window, then you know there's no need for treatment. But certainly, if you can, if you can, if you're in that window, it's useful sometimes to get that antibiotic so that you are, you know further protected from Lyme disease. And just so we are clear, the tick spoon isn't just a spoon that you take out of the drawer and say, this is going to be my tick spoon. It's an actual tick spoon. It's got a little notch in it, and that helps you remove the tick. So just so people know, you don't just pick you know, a tablespoon and say, this is for ticks. Exactly. Right. Yes, that's right. It's a special tool that you can get, and you can get it from a lot of different places, sure. and that can make it a bit easier to remove ticks. But We have one. We've already used it a time or two so far uh, this uh, spring and summer. Uh, what, hope, what hope do people have? if ticks become more prevalent? Will there ever be a vaccine that would be available to uh, preventative or reactionary? Yeah, so right now, unfortunately, there is no vaccines available against any of the tick-borne infections, the infections that are spread by the deer tick. However, um, there's definitely some uh, reason for optimism. There's a, a vaccine that's in late-stage trials for Lyme disease um, that's being developed. And actually, the early data from the earlier trials has been quite promising for its effectiveness and its safety. So that, that vaccine is going through advanced clinical trials right now. Um, we expect results in about two years. Actually, Eastern Maine Medical 
Medical Center is one of the trial sites for the vaccine. And actually, people from across northern Maine have volunteered to be part of the study. So there may be people watching this who are in the, in the trial, which is great. Um, and so uh, you certainly appreciate all the people who have been involved. Um, hopefully, we'll get results in the next couple of years. And then if the FDA approves a vaccine, that can be a really useful tool to prevent Lyme disease in our area. And before I let you go, we're talking ticks, let's talk about the other annoying critter that sometimes crawls into our life. That would be the brown tail moth, the brown tail caterpillar. What are you seeing? What are people dealing with so far this year? Yeah, so the brown tail moth, the caterpillar, so it's an invasive species that exists in Maine, unfortunately. And the little hairs that the caterpillars have on them, they can be quite irritating to our skin, also irritating to our airways if you breathe them in, especially people with underlying lung problems. And it can make people pretty sick. Um, you know, certainly, again, with that, the key is to, if you think that you have brown tail caterpillars on your property, uh, carefully removing the webs, contacting your town officials to notify them, um, and then you know, making sure you take certain measures. Like if you're someone with compromised lungs, um, maybe wearing a respirator if you're mowing the lawn to prevent those, uh, those hairs from getting aer aerosolized uh, or airborne. Um, you know, that is kind of the, the mainstay of that. The, the caterpillars are most active in the spring, and so hopefully we'll be moving out of that period of time soon. But this is kind of the, the worst of the worst, worst of the year for that. All right. Well, thank you very much for all that uh, useful information. If you want more of it, you can go uh, to Northern Light Health. You see it there on the bottom of your screen, northernlighthealth.org. Thank you so much for stopping.